Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Not long ago I made a video on how you can joint warped wood on your jointer and do it safely and easily. But a number of people said I don't have a jointer, how can I joint wood when I don't have a jointer? And today I'm going to show you two ways that you can joint wood without a jointer. For the first method, I'm going to be using a special sled that I made and I'm going to put a link at the end of the video so you'll be able to go and look at the details of that sled because I'm not going to go over it today. The other thing that is important about this methodology is the blade that you, you, that you use. Let me show you the blade that I'm using today. It's very important to use the best quality ripping blade that you can find. And this one is called the Freud Glue Line Rip. I'll put details and links in the article so you'll be able to go and check it out. Uh, and I'm using this because it gives such a fine straight cut because we're emulating a jointer. So that's why that's so important. So with this sled that I'm using, the, the advantage is that if you look at this board you can see that the edge of this is chewed up quite a bit uh, and that's just because it didn't get cut in the saw at the mill. Now the other method that I'm going to use later on it's more for taking fine cuts. This method using my glue line rip blade I'll be able to take any size width of cut that I want and still get an excellent cut and that's why I wanted to show you on this kind of a board how you can actually take that right off. So I'm just going to go ahead now and set this up and show you how that works. So to set this jig up because the wood is fairly parallel. Uh, I don't want the wood to be askew too much in this jig. So what I'm going to do is I'm just using this piece of scrap wood and I'm aligning the edge here because it is it is straight at the edge here. And now I'm going to move, I have these little blocks here and I'll move them around until I get them both on the back and the front. It's going to put tighten that slightly. And I'm going to do the same on the front here. And basically I just want to move that back so that that's even and then just tighten that up. Okay, I'm just going to snug these down. And now I need to clamp that wood on there. Now the only thing I need to do now is to move the fence So as you can see, in this case I had to make two passes and sometimes you'll have to do that. The reason I had to make two passes, I didn't have the blade quite high enough and I also didn't have the fence sort of far enough this way um, and I didn't cut off all of the roughness here. So very easy to make a second pass with this. I just had to take the fence and move it over a tiny bit and run right through and I just took a very very tiny bit off and now it's nice and smooth and straight and there's no burn marks it's absolutely perfect for gluing right the way it is. Now just like when you joint wood on your jointer you now have one side or one edge that's absolutely perf perfectly straight and flat uh, but now you have an, the other side and what we do with that um, I'll take this jig off here and whether you were doing this on a jointer or the other method I'm going to use in a minute, you still need to do the other side. And to do that, I, I would just be using the same blade, my glue line rip. I would align it so that it's just going to take a very small edge of that off. And now I would run that through. Now I'm going to get two perfect edges, but I'm also going to get a board that's parallel from end to end. Now for my second method, I'm going to be using my router. I'm going to be using a, tr a trim 
a flush trim bit, and I'm going to show you detail of that in a second. I'm also going to be using some MDF, and I want to make sure that I use the factory edge on that, and I'll be taking off just a very thin coat. Now, when we did the table saw, you know that we cut off, I cut off a great big thick piece, uh, and then the second time around, the piece that I cut off was very thin. This is what you can typically expect to take off with a flush trim bit flush trim bit. Uh, just a very thin piece like this. So let me show you this bit. Okay, so there is something called a flush trim bit. And the way they work, there's carbide on, on two sides, and the carbide is absolutely even with the bearing. So in this case, what I'm going to be doing, if we use this plywood, pretend the plywood is the MDF, uh, what I'm going to be doing is cutting the top piece, of course, I'll be trimming it. So I want the, the top piece to be just barely proud, what we call proud or uneven with the bottom part. And then when I put the router on there, it's going to just come along and just trim this top piece so that it's absolutely even with the bottom part. And that's how we're going to make uh, absolutely jointed edge. Well, I'm all ready to set up the board now. And what I've done, um, and I should show you this, I've cut a couple of holes in here because this board is actually my planing jig for my planer. Uh, and normally what I've done in the past is I actually have a strip of wood that's about six inches wide that I can use to clamp on and then run the router on. But this one, I didn't want to cut this one, and it's the only piece that I have, so I decided to cut some holes in it, and that won't compromise this as a planing jig, but now it actually gives me double duty to do. And that's what woodworking is about, is sort of compromising on, on some things to get the job done. What I'm going to do now, and I'll just do this off camera, I'm going to put some clamps in here, and I'm going to clamp my wood down, and of course it's just going to be just barely a uh, on the outside of my MDF because that's what I'm going to use to trim it off with. So I'll go ahead and do that. When I get back, we should be all ready to trim. There, and that's just how easy that is. And if you, when you were watching, if you notice some wood coming off, um, there's some funny grain going on on this board, and I wasn't quite sure which would be the best way. You can see there's a knot in here, so there's uh, grain running different directions. Uh, but it still did a great job. And now we're just gonna put these two together so that I can show you just what an amazing job either one of those will do. And they actually should match up and they do. That's perfect jointing, um, and you don't even need a jointer to do it. Well, that concludes my video on how to joint, a couple of examples of how to joint wood without owning a jointer. And of course there's other ways of jointing. I've also used my router table uh, and, and jointed that way and that works fine as well. Um, when I first started woodworking we hand planed all this stuff and, and of course that's another way of jointing the edges is using a hand plane. So there's lots of different methods. These are the two and I still use these from time to time, especially this one. I use it quite often when I'm jointing veneers and we're going to be doing that sometime in the the future as well so you'll want to stay tuned to see that. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.